Welcome back. In the last few months alone, we've seen sour-faced lefties go after the likes of Dave Chappelle for joking about trans ideology and Jimmy Carr for his joke about the Holocaust. Even the beloved Mrs. Brown's Boys creator Brendan O'Carroll was slammed for a supposed racist comment he made when interviewed with Tyler Perry last week. The permanently outraged are trying their absolute hardest to remove any joy from the world. And someone who knows all too well the feeling of being cancelled, quite literally, is the legendary and outrageous provocateur Roy Chubby Brown. Last year, the controversial comedian who has fought against political correctness had his show at Sheffield City Hall cancelled following warring petitions from snowflakes and those of us who can take a joke. Ultimately, the local city trust, Labour, of course, complained they didn't feel the comedy legend reflected their values. Now, responding at the time, Brown, who previously had shows in Swansea and Rochdale Acts 2, insisted his act had one purpose, and that is to put a smile on people's faces, certainly not to offend, which I'm sure all will agree is much needed in these present times. That's why he's been beloved for six decades and why I'm refusing to let another great British comedy icon be erased from our cultural history. Well, Roy Chubby Brown joins me now in his first interview since the woke mob mobilised to cancel him. Roy, it is Hold just on. extraordinary, isn't it, that we can't just laugh these days. We can't just bloody laugh. Well, what's beyond me is the fact that I was doing Sheffield City all for 40 years, doing two nights a week, entertaining 3,000 people, and suddenly they decide I'm not suitable anymore. Why wasn't that suitable for the last 40 years? That's what I want to know. But it's changed, hasn't it, Roy? I mean, it's changed. You look at your heroes, Ken Dodd, Bernard Manning. They would probably be cancelled in 2022 as well. Well, I can't understand what's going on in this world at the moment. No, 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 everything's just gone stupid. I hope I win the lottery and I can buy an island out to sea and put all these miserable <laughs> on it who don't know how to laugh. And let them sulk each other to death because they're getting on my nerves. And all this stuff that's going on, like, binary? You're not a man or a woman? It doesn't make sense to me that. You're, you're, you're just a person. You know, I'm, I'm the old school. You know, I'm, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be 78 next. I've been here around a long time. And so has Blue Comedy's been around a long time. In 1937, the likes of George Roby used to say, this is harmless vulgarity, this is friendly smut. If you don't like it, don't come into the room, which is exactly yeah. what I've been doing since 1969. There's been posters up, if you're easily offended, please don't come into the room. And it's as simple as that. What's wrong with these people? They've just got nothing else better to do than mourn. And well, when that's I was, what I don't I was told understand. I was going to be talking to you, I thought, God. Well, that's what I don't understand, Roy, because no one is forcing someone to buy a Roy Chubby Brown ticket and forcing them to go and sit through your act. It's a choice, and we should be allowed to make that choice. Well, you know, there was a time a couple of years ago when things were, the headlines were all this, that, and the other way. You can't say this, you can't say that. And I was letting my fans down because... I was sat at home thinking, well, what am I going to do? What am I going to say? Oh, I can't say that. I can't say this. I can't say the other. And then I was reading about uh, things like only fools and horses being being banned because I said, well, there's no nudity in it. There's no bad language in it. I know people from Peckham who said John Sullivan, the writer, got it right down to the to the white. He knew exactly what he was doing. It's like uh, like Jimmy Carr. Look at Jimmy Carr now. He's an established comedian who packs the leaders out from the, from one end of Britain to the other. He's on mainstream television. That's all he. And I mean, he knows what he's doing. He knows what he can get away with and what he can't get away with. And to me, I've, when, when I found out I was coming to talk to you, I thought, well, I don't know what's happened. I'll go on Netflix and watch him. Now, to me, he's sort of like a Jehovah's Witness with a funny laugh. He's got some great material, fantastic material. And I, th I thought to myself, well, do you know, if Tommy Cooper told his jokes, nothing would be said. Mm. It's only because he's saying it in a suit and standing there like, uh, a, a bus clippy who the hell are you? And uh, if, it, if it was cool, you, would, you wouldn't have said a word because uh, funny men say funny things. Roy, was there a moment where you thought, OK, can I strip my act of jokes about women, race, gay people? Did you, did you consider that? 
I, I did actually, I'll be honest, I did. But the thing is, when people said to me, you're, you're sexist, you're feminist, you're, you're, uh, you know, you're racist. I said, no, I'm not. I'm a jokist. I just tell jokes. Yeah. If you tell me a gag about a bloke with a glass eye, one arm and one leg who fell in a bucket and I thought it was funny, I would tell that joke on stage. That's what I do. I just tell jokes. And I've, if I wanted to put the world's wrongs at right, I'd have become a politician. That's what I would have done. And I said, oh, you can't do this, you can't. And I, I would process like most other people would. But the thing is, if you can't laugh, God, you must be a miserable get. The sad thing is, Roy, that it seems to be Labour Party areas that are really pushing uh, this drive to cancel you. Now, obviously, so many of your fans a working class would have voted Labour for their entire life. But isn't this why, Roy, Labour lost so badly in the Red Wall at the last election? Because they seem to have lost touch with their base. Uh, well, well, I look at it this way, that uh, we, we, we had no trouble for years and years and years. And suddenly different people were taking over. You had all these college kids getting degrees, coming out and getting good jobs with the council. And then, you know, comedians are an easy target. I thought, well, what can we do to get our name here in lights and become an easy target? And sometimes, you know, the press have a lot to do with that as well. Like, I, I, had, I didn't know about uh, Jimmy Carr's uh, controversial uh, gags. But when I was in the garage getting some petrol and I looked at the papers, it said, vile comic spews out whatever jokes there were. And uh, it was, I didn't buy the paper, but on the night when I was in my local pub, the lads who I drink with said, have you read about Jimmy Carr? I said, no, oh, he's this, he's that, and the other. But we've had this before. Even when Billy Connolly came out, they used to say, oh, every other word's F word. Mm. But it's how you tell it. It's not what you say, it's how you tell it. If you're a funny person, whatever you say, you will laugh at. Didn't you have a grandma or an auntie or a sister They used to say, F off and you'd laugh. But if somebody somebody who you didn't like said it, you said, Hey, I'll knock your head off in a minute. That's that's the world we live in. Yeah, and I guess the point that you're making is that if you decontextualize jokes and you put them in black and white in a newspaper, they might look a bit bad. But if you're part of the show and you're experiencing them in context, it's quite a different thing. I think Ricky Gervais has it right, though, Roy Chubby Brown. He doesn't give a damn. He does not give a damn. And he says comedy is there to offend and no one is going to tell Ricky Gervais to be woke. Well, there's a few things I think about. The thing is, like, double yellow lines. If you're not allowed to park on double yellow lines, that means all of us, fat, thin, tall, small, black, white, yellow, green, you're not allowed to park there. So I go and see Chrissy Rock and every other word was mother... You know, or every other word was uh, the N word, this, that, and the other. If I said it, oh. Double standards when it comes to these new it rules. It is double of standards, comedy. yes. Why well, don't we gonna... get every dictionary and, and, and the page has got humour on it, rip it out and throw <laughs> it in the bin? Because that's, we're becoming miserable. A lot of us, that's what we're becoming. But Roy, you're going to keep going. You're not stopping. Oh, you're yes, still so selling out venues. Well, yeah, I've been doing it over 50 years. If I, I would be letting my fans down now if I didn't, would. if I hadn't go, go on stage and say something that's controversial. And go, and because that's what they do, they hang on to that. And the next day when they get to work with their friends and say, oh, you should have heard what Chubby said last night about <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. I spend every day looking at papers, watching the news, trying to think of new things to say and do, because when I walk on stage, I don't want to be saying the same thing. So today I'm I'm looking at what's going on in Russia and I'm thinking, uh, what can I say? About, and I wrote a few lines down like, have you noticed the women are panic buying? You can't get chicken Kiev anywhere. You know, uh, Putin, I know what's upset. I know what's upset. If we're upset with him, what was his mother and father upset about? Wanting a taller bloke. Why is he only five foot two? That's because people can't kiss his ass. There's always something to say about subjects. Always. I mean, said, there's a no-fly zone over Russia. Good job there's a no-fly zone over Ethiopia because it's wick with them. <laughs> there's all, people will laugh at the daftest things, but they don't go home and take it serious, do they? No. Well, look, please don't stop. Don't 